Hi, I'm Ted Summy. I'm from Twitter. Um, before I get started with my conversation today, I want to do a quick plug for Twitter. What's great about events like this is you get to hear people like Jeff Dean talk. And you also get to hear from colleagues and people in the industry that are facing similar challenges as you and have conversations around developments in data science and machine learning. But what's great is that's actually available every day on Twitter. Twitter's phenomenal for conversation on data science and machine learning. People like Jeff Dean and other thought leaders are constantly sharing their thoughts and their developments. And you can follow that conversation and engage in it. And not only that, but you can bring that conversation back to your workplace and come off looking like a hero. Just something to consider. Um, so without that uh, shame, shameless plug, um, my name's Ted Summy. I lead product for Cortex. Cortex is Twitter's central machine learning organization. If you have any questions for me or the team, feel free to connect with me on Twitter. And we can follow up later. So before we get into how we're accelerating ML at Twitter, let's talk a little bit about how we're even using ML at Twitter. Twitter is largely organized against three customer needs, the first of which is our health initiative. That might be a little bit confusing to you. You might think of it as user safety, but we think about it as improving the health of conversations on Twitter. And machine learning is already at use here. We use it to detect spam. We can algorith algorithmically and at scale detect spam and protect our users from it. Similarly, in the abuse space, we can proactively flag uh, content as potentially abuse, toss it up for human reviews, and act on it before our users even get impacted by it. A third space where we're using machine learning here is something called NSFW, not safe for work. I think you're all familiar with the acronym. So how can we, at scale, identify this content and handle it accordingly? Another use of machine learning in this space. There's more that we want to do here, and there's more that we're already doing. Similarly, the consumer organization, this is largely what you think of, the big blue app of Twitter. And here, the, the customer job that we're serving is helping connect our customers with the conversations on Twitter that they're interested in. And one of the primary veins that we, in which we do this is our timeline. Our timeline today is ranked. So if you're not familiar, users follow accounts. Content and tweets associated with those accounts get funneled into a central feed. And we rank that based on your past engagement and interest to make sure we bring to, to forth the most development and most relevant conversations for you. Now, there's lots of conversations on Twitter, and you're not following everyone. And so there's also a job that we have to serve about bringing forth all the conversations that you're not proactively following but are still relevant to you. This is surfaced in our recommendations product, which uses machine learning to scan the corpus of content on Twitter and identify what conversations would be mo most interesting to you and push it to you in a notification. The inverse of that is when you, you know what the topics you want to explore are, but you're looking for the conversations around that. That's where we use Twitter search. This is another surface area in the big blue app that we're using machine learning. The third job to be done for our customers is helping connect brands with their customers. You might think of this as the ads product, and this is actually the OG of machine learning at Twitter, the first team that implemented it. And here we use it for what you might expect, ads ranking. That's kind of like the, the timeline ranking, but instead of tweets, it's ads, and identifying the most relevant ads for our users. And as signals to go into that, we also do user targeting to understand your past engagement in ads, understand which ads are, are in your interest space. And the third, oh, yeah, that's really good. And the third is brand safety. You might not think about this when you think about machine learning and advertising, but if you're a company like United and you want to advertise on Twitter, you want to make sure that your ad never shows up next to a tweet about a plane crash. So how do we at scale protect our brands from those off-brand conversations? And we use machine learning for this as well. So as you can tell, machine learning is a big part of all of these organizations today. And where we have shared interests and shared investment, we want to make sure we have a shared organization that serves that. And that's the need for Cortex. Cortex is Twitter's central machine learning team, and our purpose is really quite simple. To enable Twitter with ethical and advanced AI. And to serve that purpose, we've organized in three ways. The first is our applied research group. This group applies the most advanced ML te techniques from industry and research to our most important surface areas, whether they be new initiatives or existing places. This team you can kind of think of as like an internal task force or consultancy that we can redeploy against the company's top initiatives. The second is signals. When using machine learning, having shared data assets that are broadly useful can provide us more leverage. 
Examples of this would be our language understanding team that looks at tweets and identifies named entities inside them. Those can then be offered up as features for other teams to consume in their own applications of machine learning. Similarly, our media understanding team looks at images and can create a fingerprint of any image, and therefore we can identify every use of that image across the platform. These are examples of shared signals that we're producing that can be used for machine learning at scale inside the company. And the third er organization is our platform team. And this is really the origins of Cortex. Here, we provide tools and infrastructure to accelerate ML development at Twitter, increase the velocity of our ML practitioners. And this is really the focus of the conversation today. When we set out to build this ML platform, we decided we wanted a shared ML platform across all of Twitter. And why is that important that it be shared across all of Twitter? Well, we want transferability. We want the great work being done in the ads team to be, where possible, transferable to, the, to benefit the health initiative, where that's relevant. And similarly, if we have great talent in the consumer team that's interested in moving to the ads team, if they're on the same platform, they can transfer without friction, and be able to ramp up quickly. So we set out with this goal of having a shared ML platform across all of Twitter. And when we did that, we looked at a couple of product requirements. First, it needs to be scalable. It needs to be able to operate at Twitter scale. The second, it needs to be adaptable. This space is developing quickly, so we need a platform that can evolve with data science and machine learning developments. Third is the talent pool. We want to make sure that we have a development environment at Twitter that appeals to the ML researchers and engineers that we're hiring and developing. Fourth is the ecosystem. We want to be able to lean on the partners that are developing industry-leading tools so that we can focus on technologies that are Twitter-specific. Fourth is documentation. I think you ought to understand that. We want to be able to quickly unblock our practitioners as they hit issues, which is inevitable in any platform. And finally, usability. We want to remove friction and frustration from the lives of our team so that they can focus on delivering value for our end customers. So considering these product requirements, let's see how TensorFlow is done against them. First is scalability. We validated this by putting TensorFlow by way of our implementation we call DeepBird against timeline ranking. So every tweet that's ranked in the timeline today runs through TensorFlow. So we can consider that test validated. Second is adaptability. The novel architectures that TensorFlow can support, as well as the custom loss functions, allows us to react to the latest research and employ that inside the company. An example that we published on this publicly is our use of a split net architecture in ads ranking. So TensorFlow has been great, very adaptable for us. Third is the talent pool. And we think about the talent pool in kind of two types. There's the ML engineer and the ML researcher. And as a proxy of, of these audiences, we looked at the GitHub data on these. And clearly, TensorFlow is widely adopted amongst ML engineers. And similarly, the archive community shows strong evidence of wide adoption in the academic community. On top of this proxy data, we have also have anecdotal evidence of the speed of ramp up for ML researchers and ML engineers inside the company. And the fourth is the ecosystem, whether it's TensorBoard, TF data validation, TF model analysis, TF Metastore, TF Hub, TF pi TFX pipelines. There's a slew of these products out there, and they're phenomenal. They allow us to focus on de developing tools and infrastructure that is specific to Twitter's needs and lead on the great work of others. So we're really grateful for this, and TensorFlow does great here. Fifth being documentation. Now, this is what you would go to when you go to TensorFlow, and you see that phenomenal documentation as well as great education resources. But what you might not appreciate, and what we've come to really appreciate, is the value of the user-generated content. What Stack Overflow and other platforms can provide in terms of user-generated content is almost as valuable as anything TensorFlow itself can create. And so TensorFlow, given its widespread adoption and its great TensorFlow website, has provided phenomenal documentation for ML practitioners. Finally, usability. And this is why we're really excited about TensorFlow 2.0. The orientation around the Keras API makes it more user-friendly. It also still continues to allow for flexibility for more advanced users. The eager execution enables more rapid and intuitive debugging, and it closes the gap between ML engineers and modelers. So clearly, from this checklist, we're pretty happy with our engagement with TensorFlow. 
we're excited about continuing to develop the platform with them and push the limits on what it can do. Um, gratitude to the community for their participation and involvement in the product and appreciate their conversation on Twitter as we advance it. So if you have any questions for me, as I said before, you can connect with me, but I'm not alone here today. A bunch of my colleagues are here as well, so if you see them roaming the halls, feel free to engage with them. Or, as I shared before, you can continue the conversation on Twitter. Here are their handles. Thank you for your time. Cheers.